Thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Gianluca Russo. I'm an application specialist in Nanotemper Technologies, and today I have the pleasure to moderate this webinar, helped by my colleague Tessa. Dr. Therese Arhalström studied biomedicine in Linköping in Sweden and moved to Lund for her PhD in medical microbiology. She pursued her postdoc at the Leibniz Institute in Jena, focused on infection biologists, and since 2019, she joined Nanotemper, where she is now Senior Application Specialist. Today, we would like to discuss about viruses, what they are, and how understanding them can help us finding new therapeutic targets. We will discuss some data extrapolated from different publications, addressing through binding affinity studies, key questions like viral composition, viral inhibitor function, and viral infections mechanism. We hope this webinar will shed some light on this invisible threat and spread some knowledge about tools available to push research forward. It's my pleasure now to give the word to Tessa, which uh, will discuss with us about molecular tools to study viral infectious diseases. Thank you, Tessa. Thank you very much, Gianluca, for this very nice introduction. <clears throat> if we look at viral-induced pandemics, they have been affecting the human society through history. If we just have a look here, uh, we have had several big outbreaks. We have the smallpox, Spanish flu, Asian flu, HIV and AIDS, which is still going on as, and is affecting a lot of people. If we think about the current situation right now, which is very critical with the coronavirus pandemic, this is actually nothing new. The last 20 years, there have been three pandemics associated with coronavirus, the SARS, the MERS and the COVID-19. Um, thus, this is really a big threat to human society. In addition, what we should not forget about is the seasonal influenza. Um, this is also a serious illness and up to 650,000 people die every year of respiratory diseases linked to the seasonal flu. Around 8 million millions of people die every year in bacterial and viral infectious diseases with some country specific variations. 20% of the FDA approved drugs are related to infectious diseases, thus um, underlying how strong the need for these resources are right now. Just think about the COVID-19. There is no available drug, there is no treatment and also no vaccine. And now there is a big push um, to come up with a cure for this disease very fast. This is also reflected by the scientific community and if you look at publications during the last month, including the COVID-19 keyword, there's been a dra dramatically increase um, of number of publications. In order to fight the viruses, we need to know the viruses, of course. There are several different forms and structures. They're between 20 and 300 nanometer big. Uh, millions of viruses exist, but only 5,000 has been so far described in detail. A virus can have a lipid envelope, um, all viruses have nucleic acids, and depending on which type, this uh, decides the replication modus of the virus. The genome is in co um, contained within the capsid, which is composed of viral encoded proteins of different structures. We also have viral proteins, uh, which is of course involved in all uh, of the cycles, for example, the genome replication, the self-assembly, and also in the host infection. For example, surface exposed proteins on the viral surface. In order to exert its pathogenic effect, uh, the virus has uh, certain steps that goes throughout the life cycle. This is a very simplified picture, however, it contains the major steps. So first, the virus has to attach to the human host cell. If it has a lipid envelope, this can fuse with the host membrane. The capsid is entering the cell and is uncoated. And thereafter, the genome uh, starts to replicate using host proteins, either in the cytoplasm of the cell or in the nucleus. New viral particles are synthesized, and when the host cell is full, it bursts and releases the new viral particles. There are actually many existing drugs uh, which can fight viral um, viruses and virus, viral infectious diseases. They all target uh, one of these steps. You can target um, the cell entry, um, the capsid when it's coming into uh, the cell by uh, using inhibitors for their coating, the replication stage, and also, of course, the assembly and protein function can be blocked, and also the release of the virus particles. 
In addition to target all of these steps, we can also there are also drugs that boost the immune system of the host. And most of these all these drugs are part of falls into one of these categories. Today we will uh, show you some example where researchers has um, we be, um, used binding affinity uh, by using our microscale thermophasis technology to study uh, the function of viral proteins involved in the entry of the virus and also in the replication of the virus. We have chosen four different viruses which we think has an, have an impact of human society. First, uh, we have, of course, very hot topic, the coronavirus. We have one example uh, with hepatitis C virus. Also one example of HIV, which is a lentivirus. And last but not least, the influenza virus. The first example is um, about the coronavirus. On the surface of the coronavirus, uh, there's only one antigen present. That's the spike protein which can bind to the human receptor uh, on the host cell. In this study, the researchers resolved the structure of the spike protein and identified a conserved epitope, which hopefully can be used in the development of the vaccine. The researchers used our technology, microscale thermophoresis, to study and to confirm the functionality of the recombinantly expressed spike protein by analyzing the binding between this protein and a host cell receptor. The next example is the protein that is involved in the replication of the hepatitis C virus. Um, here, the researchers wanted to find out which domain of the protein that is responsible, responsible for its functionality, and then using inhibitors to be able to inhibit this function. The first step was to just confirm the binding between the protein and RNA, and then thereafter they tested several different inhibitors. Here I just show one, and as you can see, we have a significantly reduced affinity when the inhibitor is present. Thus, you can study inhibitor potency using MST and uh, do competition assays. Um, Testa, sorry, a uh, quick question. Um, I was wondering, you showed us two examples using uh, purified proteins, I suppose. Is it possible to study a bit more complicated interactions, maybe like whole particles uh, to host uh, receptors and similar stuff? Very good question, Gianluca. And yes, you can study interactions with whole virus particles. And actually, after this example, I will show you one example of this. So I will come back to your question then. Um, here, the researchers studied HIV, which required the T cell receptor CD4 to enter the target cell. It has a major uh, protein, surface exposed protein, which is GP120, which binds to CD4. And um, in this uh, study, they wanted to find out whether glycosylation of CD4 had an effect on the affinity, so on the binding, but also then on the infection. On the left panel here, um, the researchers show binding um, between the GP120 and CD4, the human CD4, which is non glycosylated and they found a strong affinity. So it bound with a, uh, strongly. On the right panel, they used uh, CD4 from the chimpanzees, which is doubly glycosylated, and there they saw a reduction of the affinity. Um, thus, um, in addition to see a reduction in the binding, they also saw a reduction in the infection. The last example, and coming back to your question, Gianluca, yes, you can study interactions with whole viral particles. Here, the researchers, they used influenza A and the whole viral particle, and they wanted to find out, they wanted to find inhibitors that could inhibit an attachment to the host cell. Therefore, they used microscale thermophoresis and screened a lot of different inhibitors, and they found this one, which is coated on a nanoparticle, to bind very nicely to the whole viral particle, and in addition, it also uh, prevented the binding to the uh, host cell membrane. So not only to uh, understand how the drugs work, but also to understand uh, how the different mechanism in the virus works, is very important to be able to, uh, to target them and also to be able to fight the virus. So to understand, for example, the physical parameters, the basic molecular mechanism, and also to find targets for novel therapeutic agents 
are important steps in this characterization. Nanotempo technologies can help you in all of these steps. And um, just showing this list of publications in which MST has been used uh, in these studies uh, prove this. You can use either the small instrument, NT115, to determine your binding affinity, or if you have a large scale and you need a high throughput, you can use our Deantus instrument. So in this field of um, viral infectious diseases, this is also associated with the field of gene therapy and vaccine development, in which our colleagues have also recorded webinars, which you can um, watch uh, online. So you just need to visit our homepage to get more information. Um, and that's it for my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Tessa, for this very nice presentation. Uh, before leaving uh, um, this uh, webinar and our guest, I would have two questions for you. Um, one, the first question is uh, more like a curiosity because uh, indeed you showed us interaction between the host and the viral particle, for example, but often the viral structure is quite compl complex. We have like the virus receptor is di dimers, trimers. So I was wondering if microscale thermophoresis can also characterize more the virus itself or this uh, uh, dimerization, oligomerization properties. Yes, uh, a good question. So you can analyze um, dimerization, trimerization, oligomerization very easily also using uh, microscale thermophoresis. The only thing you need to do is you label your protein and then you uh, use the same protein as a ligand. And there you can find out um, how strong it interacts with itself. We also have several publications on this topic, which you can also um, get more information about how exactly to do this. Thank you. And um, another question, you should a bit more general. You showed us that the virus uh, and the, most of the research indeed the target the different uh, step of the viral cell cycle. And you gave some nice example about two specific steps. I was wondering if you could uh, briefly elaborate more if uh, microscale thermophoresis maybe can also be helpful in other steps of the viral cycle and how. Yes. So, of course, you can use um, uh, our technologies in all of these different steps. As you can study, you can study protein protein, protein RNA, protein DNA, small molecule, ion interactions, the interactions with the whole viral particles, as I also showed you an example, the effect of glycosylation. Actually, you can study whatever you like to. What you just have to keep in mind is that one of the interaction partners needs to be fluorescently labeled. But if you can manage that, then you can do um, nearly whatever you want to. Thank you, Tessa. And uh, thanks to all of you for listening to us today. And I'm sure that if there would be questions, please visit our website, nanotempertech.com, and contact us. We will be happy to answer any curiosity you may have. And with that, we wish uh, the best. Stay home, stay safe, take care, everybody, and thank you for listening. Thank you very much.